The laser pointer up here? I don't see it. Uh, 1959, Carl Pfeiffer published DMAE, was a great compound and was sold as Diener. So I was watching the lecture. I worked with Dr. Pfeiffer for about 10 years and I realized, boy, we're still talking about how to boost neurotransmitters with precursors. And the reason why it didn't take off is that most of the studies were looking for a rapid result in ADD. With brain science, you're looking for changes over a 20-year period. And so that's uh, what I'm always looking for. So let's see the next slide. Do you have a, I don't have a pointer or a slide machine up here. Maybe he took it with him by accident. Can you turn the slide next? You think it's amazing to me I'm giving a talk on the brain and it's a pointer. Still nothing to change slides up here. Oh, that's good. Amazing to me, I'm giving a lecture on the brain. Brain's the most important organ in the body. Who's had a lecture on memory? Who knows what a Wechsler memory scale is? Who knows how to test verbal memory, visual memory, immediate memory, working memory? Who knows that an MRI is, almost always shows atrophy with age and that the real issue is electrophysiology, voltage and speed of the brain? I mean, what he was just talking about with dopaminergic function was voltage. How many cells are pumping out uh, chemicals? How many of you have ever taken attention test? I actually know how to measure attention, omissions, commissions, reaction time, variability. That know that virtually half of all adults flunk all attention tests. They flunk the attention tests, the adults. That's why they drive into trucks. That's why they have accidents. That's why they cut their foots off with lawnmowers. That's why they ski into trees. That's why 100,000 people will die every year in the United States due to attention errors. And that memory is the basis of personality. What about how many of you know that almost all the anxiety, depression, insomnia that's treated is due to cognitive decline? It's amazing to me after my, this is my 12th year, I think, or 14th year here teaching and my 33rd year in medicine, that the measurement of the brain is still somewhat backwards compared to the fact that everyone in this room knows echo, EKG, CT angio, stress, Valium, Halter monitor, CRP, SED rates, homocysteine, and very few of you have actually ever had a brain health assessment. We can replace virtually every organ of the body with pills, shots. You cut out your parathyroid, you can get parathyroid shots. You can cut out your thyroid, replace it with thyroid. You can replace your heart to some degree with a machine or a pump. Your lungs can be replaced by respirators, your kidneys by dialysis machines. You can lose half your other organs and your body could almost be excavated. But if you lose your brain, you're a corpse. And yet almost none of you know all the core measurements of brain health assessment. The neurologists keep throwing an MRI and an EEG at you, which is something from a previous century. So let's go to the next slide. Do I have to do all the slides? Or you have a slide machine thing here. Maybe this is it. Hold it. There we go. I got it. Okay. So the first thing is, I never said I had a practical IQ. This is it. Delivery of head care head first. Number two, every organ's going through some form of menopause. Amazing phenomenon, but another amazing phenomenon is that we're still teaching everybody that aging is a factor in every chronic degenerative disease. Most doctors, when I talked to a doctor the other day about rheumatoid arthritis in a 55-year-old patient who got worse during menopause, I said, do you think that there's any factor, role, that she got worse during menopause and that estrogen, progesterone, testosterone are all steroids and DHEA is a steroid? He says, no, who cares, menopause, nothing, nothing to do with arthritis or inflammation. Next slide. Ultimately, the model includes drugs, hormones, nutrients, and lifestyle. I challenge everyone in this room, every illness you ever see, you should be able to come up with a medication program a nutrient program, a hormone program, and a lifestyle. In your own mind, you should be able to rank each one of those and say which one counts for the most. So a person comes in, it's obvious, with an acute fever of 104, maybe the antibiotic is number one. A person comes in with a blood pressure of 210 over 120, it's obvious that a blood pressure drug is number one, but it's not always so obvious when it comes to depression, anxiety, memory loss, attention loss, etc. Certainly, the drug therapies are not number one with chronic degenerative disease, such as osteoporosis, memory loss, attention deficit. And ultimately, every single great medicine is 
the new physical. What we represent here, whether or not anyone's told you, is we represent number four, a new Flexner report. The proper physical exam begins with a head-to-toe ultrasound. The current physical exam will be put into a museum, tapping on people's livers, playing drums on their chest, percussion. All right, it will be laughed at in the 21st century or certainly in the future of medical history. They will say that imaging is the way to go. Ultrasound physical is the way we go, followed by PET, MRI, CT, CT angio, depending on what we need. That lays out, I think, what we do here in this conference. We deliver healthcare head first. The reason why is that every condition, if you have heart disease, one person with heart disease that has depression, same amount of heart disease, the guy who's blue, anxious, stressed out, dies, the one who isn't, doesn't die. Same thing with cancer patients. The person with a brain problem dies more frequently and faster if you don't know how to manage sleep, depression, anxiety, memory loss. That last lecture was great. He said the cognitive decline or the neuropsychiatric decline of aging in animals due to dopaminergic dropout, and I believe also cholinergic dropout, leads to pre, uh, premature death. We apply menopause to every system. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if a person has a bad memory. You say, all right, what do I know about memory? Well, I know memory is affected by thyroid. This thing doesn't really work too well. If we have another pointer, it would be good. But this one, uh, if you affected by, if you look down, there's thyropause. But some memory patients are affected by parathyroid pause. It turns out that we are really in the blind if we are not assessing all the pauses. Because one person whose brain health assessment is deteriorating in memory and attention is due to thyroid. Another one's due to pineal gland or other problems. Let's see. To the rescue. There you go. All right, works. Thyroid, parathyroid. So a person, everyone has an age print in which certain systems are more damaged than others and result in deterioration of lifestyle. This age print can be done by measuring creatinine clearance, growth hormone levels, absorption of nutrients like vitamin D, insulin levels. It can be done by PFTs. So what we're really doing every time we scan people and we convince people to go through an executive health scan is we want to rank the top five or six chronic diseases. I look out in this room, <clears throat> most of us are in denial of death. If you're 50 years old, you're two-thirds dead, and you probably have about 10 silent diseases. At 18, our adults, our kids arrive at adulthood with five chronic degenerative or inadequate development diseases. By 75, the PA can make a list of 22 diseases routinely in 75-year-old people with chronic illnesses and creatinine clearance and pulmonary function and muscle mass, sarcopenia, osteopenia. And somebody has to decide how to rank these in reference to what the key organ is. Despite the fact that American historians will think that the key organ of our generation was the face for women and the erections for men, I have something else to offer. The brain is the key organ of the human body, and that's the way it goes. All right? Women come in every day. They're progressing towards dementia, and almost no one gets it that untreated menopause is the number one cause of female dementia, and untreated male menopause, in some ways, the number one cause in growth hormone uh, deficiency of male vascular disease. So we know that virtually every illness is a, a neuropsychiatric endocrine experience with the recognition of natural hormones as anti-inflammatories. But more than that, we know that progesterone relieves anxiety, testosterone increases dopamine, estrogen increases acetylcholine, and many crossovers in between. Pregnenolone releases, uh, releases GABA in the brain. It is a natural valium. Antidepressants are actually brain salts that preserve neurotransmitter. You can't open the skull and put some salt on top of your head, but you definitely need preservatives as you get older. So no skull opening. You have to take it as a pill. And the bottom line is that we need to use hormones in a way that benefits brain chemistry.